Hello there. Um, I'm out here today on this not particularly nice day um, to talk about this thing. So this is called a, an arrow sash. You might know it as a Métis sash. And the French have got a word for it that I'm not comfortable pronouncing. Um, something like cinturon fleshy, fleshy, something like that. It means arrow sash, arrow belt, something like that. Um, so this is an interesting example of a multicultural technology. So um, the origin of this, um, so in the Renaissance era, the sash was a popular part of European fashion. Um, you've, seen, you've seen the swashbuckler picture of the guy with a sash. Now those sashes were constructed differently from this one. So those were typically sort of a, a plain woven sash made out of silk or whatever. Um, these ones were developed from an indigenous technology. So indigenous people, they would buy wool from the traders, but they didn't have um, looms. So they didn't have looms to weave cloth out of it. With. So they developed a technique which was um, finger weaving. And with finger weaving, you can make belts and garters um, and tump lines. Um, and it's very good for coming up with these sort of patterns. So the French trappers, they saw the belts, the tump lines, whatever, and they thought, oh, that's a neat technology. And it was quite helpful to them because they could make something out in the bush just out of a, a bunch of yarn. Um, they didn't have to go and buy a bunch of cloth or whatever. So the French trappers adopted this indigenous style of weaving to their sashes. And then the indigenous people said, hey, that looks good. Right? And then they started making sashes similar. So, um, it's a multicultural technology. It's part indigenous, part French Canadian. Um, so you got the term Métis sash. And I'm a little bit iffy on that because it's slightly misleading. It gives you the impression that it's a specifically Métis thing. It's, it's not. Lots of people who were not Métis wore sashes like this, made sashes like this. However, on the other hand, the term Métis sash is kind of apt because, like the Métis, it's the convergence of two cultures. Right? It's a, um, I, I find that an interesting linguistic thing. So the sash has got a couple of functions. The first one, it holds your coat closed if you don't have any buttons. So a lot of coats back in the day, they didn't have any buttons, so tie a sash to hold it closed at the bottom, get a scarf to hold it closed at the top. Um, the second function makes you look nice. Um, the third function is that it's, a, it's pockets. So a lot of old coats, a lot of old clothing, they don't have pockets. Um, so there's three ways that this thing can serve as a pocket. Let me get my knife. I got my pocket knife. So if you got something long like a axe, you can just sort of stick it in your belt, loop the blade over the top, and the axe will just stay put. Right? With something like this, pocket knife, I can push it through. So if I just stuck that in there and I walked around, it would eventually fall through if I wasn't continually adjusting it. So the second way that you, you want to do something like a pocket is, so if you want to use the belt as a pocket for something small like this, what you do is you fold the belt such that it's a little bit like a pocket. Um, now this in and of itself is not sufficient because I can just push that through and it's going to fall out. So what you do, you notice that the belt, the sash has got two layers here. You take the inner layer and you fold it like a pocket, and then you take the outer layer and you put that over top to hold everything in place. Now I push on it and it's not going to fall through. Um, um, the other way that it works as a pocket is it turns your the top part of your coat into a pair of pockets. Right? So take, take the thing with what? And I stick it in the coat, and it's not going to fall through because the sash is holding it up. Right? I've done that with, um, I'm out for a walk, and I got 
Uh, I'm starting to overheat, so I take my mittens off and just tuck them in there and they'll, they'll be fine. So this ash has got a fourth function, which is that it sort of functions like a corset. Right? And I don't just mean that it gives you this rather striking figure. I mean that in terms of like practical sense of the thing. So the, the French trappers, um, they're out there on long trips. They got their great big canoes, which are full of supplies, full of furs. They're doing a lot of heavy lifting. You know, you're doing a lot of heavy lifting. One of the things that's vulnerable is your back. So you do the sash up tight enough, and if you've got a wide enough sash, it'll reinforce your back, help to prevent injuries. Right? Ensure that you're lifting with your knees, not with your back. Um, so the other thing it does is it holds your guts in. So a lot of those French trappers, because they're doing a lot of heavy lifting, it was fairly common for them to get hernias. So sash like this, you do it up nice and tight, hold your guts in if you get a hernia. Um, unpleasant thought, whatever. It, it also has additional sort of um, situational uses. If you had a long enough sash, you could um, use it like a, a burden strap, like a tump line, um, to support, a, let's say, buckets of water, or drag your canoe, or whatever, this, that, and the other. Um, additionally, like, it's, a, it's a long piece of cloth. You could use it as, let's say, a bandage. You cut your arm pretty badly, bandage it up, tie it around your upper arm, uh, use it as a tourniquet, um, so on, so on, so on. It's a useful piece of equipment. Um, it doesn't just look nice. So I think I'm going to show you how to, how to tie it. There's a little bit of a tricky technique for tying it. I'm going to do this. Okay, so you got the sash. You take the sash and you fold it 90 degrees and about there. You hold that fold to your hip. You take the rest of the sash and you loop it around your body, trying to keep it flat. Um, and you go fairly tight, and you go around the body twice. The sash should be long enough to go around the body twice. And you're going to take this loose end, and you're going to tuck it underneath everything. Trying to keep that flat as well. Pull it through. Straighten it out. Tighten the two up. Straighten it out so it looks nice. And there you go. The Aero Sash. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this interesting. Better get in and warm up.